Hello, and welcome back to this Let's Play of Amnesia. When we left off, I was just about to go into the guest room, which I'm about to do right now, as soon as this loads. Herbert's trunk was wrapped in rope. The lock had been broken by thieves, he assumed. He wondered if anything had been left, considering all the hands it had passed. On a side note, doing this Let's Play gives me much more respect for everyone else who's ever done a Let's Play, because I am just now realizing just how difficult it is to remain at all remotely interesting while you're do trying to play a game. And I'm probably failing. That was creepy. Ah, uh, no. What's this? Yeah, there's some oil there. Uh, let's see, there's no- oh, there's a note right here. But first we're going to check the cabinets. I'm told that you can actually use these shelves here to hide from grunts. If you hold one up in front of your face, they can't see you. They're not the brightest. Hey, Laudanum! I don't think I ever mentioned, Laudanum refills your health if you need it. I've never actually used it, though. Because part of that is because if you use a consumable right before you die, you still lose the consumable whenever you come back to life. Before I start picking up notes and such, I'm just gonna grab everything. Like this tin box. And since I am right here, I'll pick up the crowbar. 2nd of July. 1839. I received a letter today from the Algerian governor's office disclosing the fate of Herbert's expedition. About a week after my departure, Abdullah, one of the men traveling with us, returned from the desert. He was badly injured, as if maimed by a lion. The man rambled deliriously about the expedition being attacked by something horrible. The French quickly dispatched a search party to look for the expedition. After searching for days, they found the camp abandoned without any trace of Herbert or his men. Tomorrow, I'll retrieve the things they recovered from Herbert's tent at the customs house. I don't know what to make of it, but I'm worried for him. Let's see. Oh, this is one of the only optional flashbacks in the game. You touch the bed. Daniel. What? Still having nightmares, I see. Yes. I can't shake them. They come every night. We'll put a stop to them. You'll see. What's this over here? 3rd of July, 1839. Today I picked up Herbert's things at the customs house. I dug through the trove of documents he had carried and found a log detailing the expedition. The nature of this text ranged from quick notes to colorful accounts of transpired events. I skimmed the pages, trying to figure out what might have happened. May 17th, the day I was trapped inside the orb chamber, Herbert dryly states, recovered Daniel after one hour of entrapment. This confused me greatly. I was suffocating within minutes. How could I have lasted an hour? I continued reading the peculiar text. Herbert states his facts without judgment or passion, but suddenly I could read frustration into his text. He pushed his men to investigate the underground tomb, an effort which seems to have strained the minds of his men. Madness spread through the ranks, and Herbert had to take some extreme measures to continue. He finally visits the chamber himself, where he retrieves the orb to the surface. His account confuses me greatly. If he has the orb, what are those pieces in my drawing room? Now, I don't—I haven't played this through with developer commentary yet, but I believe that's a reference to uh, some scrap notes they're going to have with Herbert's voice. Which is Charlemagne, I believe. But I could be wrong. The key. Please, let it be here.
Now, in here it's important not to go to that side of the room, because then a grunt will spawn. And we don't want that. 4th of July, 1839. It's done! The orb is assembled. I was awakened by an exhausting nightmare. Shaking and sweating, I retired to the drawing room with a cup of tea. The relic pieces lay spread across the table as I'd left them, but somehow I knew how it was supposed to be. I fetched the tar, which I had prepared to fix the pieces together, and without fault I joined them, producing the orb I remembered so clearly. The tar proved unnecessary. It was pushed out from the joining pieces as they merged on their own, with no adhesive. The ancient stone relic now rests on my table. Its immaculate surface and perfect shape could have been molded by a factory. This is all too strange. Now look, uh, there is a hidden key around here. You might notice that. Was it just moved? Oh, thank God, there it is. I guess it is a good place to hide it then. And now we have a key in a jar. But how do we get it out? That's how. And now we are done here except for the machine room. And if this were Final Fantasy VI, there would be an ether hidden in that clock. The strange letter frightened him, but it was also the only one which offered some comfort. Alright, back down the stairs we go, carefully avoiding the shadow's nasty goop. And now, all we need to do is watch this flashback. Herbert, how did we find this place? An old friend back in Algiers gave me a map. Why isn't he with us? Didn't he want to come? He wanted to, Daniel, but things don't always turn out the way we planned. Now, never mind. You have an ascending room. Will it take us to the inner sanctum? It will definitely take care of the vertical part of our journey. So, you have ridden an elevator before? Yes, the Colosseum at Regent's Park has one. It takes you to the gallery where you can view the panorama. Good. This ride might be a little longer, and in the other direction. And now, all you have to do is unlock this door with this key, which apparently breaks the moment you use it. And up next is the machine room, which we'll cover in the next part. See you!